By the fall of 1917, a wave of patriotism had swept through Evansville, supporting the war against the Central Powers in Europe. With a large German population, many residents felt compelled to serve their country to show what good Americans they were. As troops started to arrive in France, residents of Evansville and America awaited news of troop involvement, news of the first casualties. On the 5th of November, 1917, the people of Evansville unfolded their morning newspapers to find that Merle David Hay of Glidden, Iowa, Thomas Enright of Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, and James Bethel Gresham of Evansville, Indiana had all died in the early morning hours of November 3rd. In McLean County, Kentucky, on April 23rd, 1893, James Bethel Gresham was born to Alice and Green Gresham. He lived out the first years of his life on the farm of James Lindsay in a one-room log cabin. After the family suffered the tragic loss of their father in 1899, the family moved to the west side of Evansville, where James attended Centennial School. During his teen years on the west side, he worked various factory jobs at the cotton mill and furniture factory. At age 21, James enlisted in the U.S. Army and was sent to Jefferson Barracks in St. Louis, Missouri for basic training. Once his training was completed, James and his unit were sent to the Mexican border under General John J. Pershing. There, the troops began their mission to find Pancho Villa and capture the rebel leader. On June 3, 1917, the regiment boarded trains in El Paso and headed toward the East Coast, where they would then board transport ships bound for France. At this point, the 16th Infantry Regiment was attached to the 1st Division, most commonly known as the Big Red One. At one point during their voyage, they were nearly sunk by torpedo fire from a German U-boat. Throughout the late summer and early autumn months, the Big Red One continued instruction off the front lines. The battle-hardened men of the French Army trained the Americans in rifle, grenade, bayonet, machine gun, chemical warfare, and trench assault and defense tactics. The men trained for only six weeks to learn what it should have taken a year to learn. On October 20th, the men were stationed on a quiet front near the small town of Bathelmont to be seasoned before being sent to a more dangerous area. This devastated little town became a temporary home to the soldiers. They learned to cope with muddy, rat-infested trenches, cold, rainy weather, and disease. In the early morning hours of November 3rd, 1917, the men of the 16th Regiment saw their first combat. As shells rained down on the American trenches, 250 German soldiers stormed across no man's land. Dropping down into the trenches, the German troops expected the inexperienced Americans to flee from the gunfire. James Gresham, defending his sector of the trench, mistook an attacking German for one of his own. Accounts vary, but according to several, the German soldier stood silhouetted on the lip of the trench, and James called out, don't shoot, I'm an American. The German raised his weapon and shot Gresham in between the eyes. With that shot, Gresham became the first American casualty of the war, as recognized by the government and the object of Evansville's pride. Immediately after his death, posters sprung up all across the nation displaying the heroism of the three who had died in the German raid. Give till it hurts, they gave till they died, the world proclaimed to the fellow citizens of the fallen men. The three soldiers were put to rest near the battlefield in which they died. While the bodies were lowered into the ground, General Bordeaux, the French commander of the 18th Infantry, delivered an address to the people attending the funeral. France posthumously awarded Gresham the French War Cross, which was given to individuals who distinguished themselves by acts of heroism in combat with enemy forces. The residents of the nearby town of Lorraine even erected a monument to the three heroes. Upon hearing the news of the hometown hero's death, the Evansville Courier began a fund for a new house for Gresham's mother, Miss Alice Dodd. By the first day after the announcement of the beginning of the fund, the citizens of Evansville had already contributed $141. Rallying behind this Gresham Hero Home Fund, within two weeks patriots from eight states had given more than $1,500 in cash and supplies. The house was completed by August of 1918 and on the 18th of that month, it was handed over to Mrs. Dodd. Hundreds of people visited the home that day and the next, paying tribute to her son's sacrifice for America. The house still stands, a small bungalow designed by Clifford Shopbell. It overlooks Garvin Park, and even today, from the living room, one can look out of the five large ribbon windows and see the park. 
Mrs. Alice Dodd lived in the house until her death in 1928. Although it has undergone several renovations since then, the original floor plan remains intact, and the Gresham home remains one of Evansville's most interesting memorials. But not every aspect of Evansville's patriotism was positive. Waves of anti-German sentiment swept throughout the community. In April of 1918, the school board banned all German studies within the school system, and the teachers were forced to take a pledge of loyalty. Churches that had once given service in the traditional German began to offer services in English by popular vote of the ministers. The Evansville Democrat, a German newspaper, was discontinued after 54 years of publication for the simple reason that it was published in an enemy language. One alleged German sympathizer was even forced to kiss the American flag to prove his loyalty. In another extreme case, a man with German heritage was lynched by a mob of 350 people for making treacherous remarks in public. Nearly four years passed, and the war slowly faded away. Finally, on July 16, 1921, Gresham's body was returned to Evansville. The city planned an elaborate memorial and funeral service in which a large processional was to drive down Court Street to the Coliseum, where the casket would be displayed. An overwhelming crowd of over 20,000 people visited before the casket was laid to rest at Locust Hill Cemetery. Today, James Bethel Gresham is remembered for the pride he brought to Evansville with his ultimate sacrifice. Even though he lived and died a long time ago, Evansville will never forget our hometown hero.